Hi there and welcome to this conversation about the four components to writing success. I'm joined by Letitia Glenn, the founder of Contour Saudery, and Alejandro Gonzalez, a Franklin Method educator and public professional. The four components consist of the horse, the rider, the saddle, and what we call the interface. So picture this. Those four components are the four tires on your car. So what would happen if that horse tire, that horse component up front, is a little bit underinflated? Well, it won't take long before you have some vibration, some friction. In other words, some disharmony as you go down the road. That's what tends to happen in a horse life is we're a great rider, but our equipment's in the way or something like that, right? Everything's going well, but there's just something that's out of balance. And that's why, we're, that's why we here at Contour Saudery are reaching out to industry experts like Alejandra to bring you information to keep all four components, all four tires, if you will, inflated and in balance. So today, we're going to kick this thing off by talking to Letitia Glenn. She's going to focus on the saddle and the interface components. And if you don't ride a Contour saddle, no worries. This isn't about our saddles. This is about teaching you how to help your saddle fit your horse better in motion. So we'll talk about the interface, that space between the horse's back and the saddle, and how to fit it so that it's not pinchy, it's not static, but that it can that your horse can move really under it and create a nice balance for you as a rider. Alejandro's gonna talk about rider biomechanics and how to move with your horse in motion. Oftentimes instructors teach you to do something like put your heels down, engage your core, something that tends to be very static. Well, you're gonna learn very quickly that we need to be very dynamic as a horse moves. We can't be rigid or stiff. She's gonna dive deep into the pelvis and how it works and all of its joints. And we're just so excited to partner with Alejandra to bring you this information. We'd be remiss if we don't talk a little bit about the horse though, because you could be a great rider, have great equipment, and still be having some challenges. And if that's happening to you, you need to consult your team because it could be a horse behavior issue. You might need to learn some skills like applying horse psychology. You may need to consult your veterinarian. It could be some pain. You may have a farrier problem. Whatever it is, just ask yourself, who's on my team to solve my horse, uh, to help me with my horse component? Who's on my team to help me with my rider component? And who's on my team to help me with my saddle and interface component? And with that, I'm going to kick this over to Letitia Glenn to talk about the saddle and the interface, and then over to Alejandra. This four components of rider um, success thing is, in, is important to break down just a little bit, very briefly. Um, so where is it? <laughs> Here's, there we go. There's the horse's back, which we are trying to fit with equipment and sit on top of. And obviously looking at the way a horse moves is an extremely challenging undertaking that we um, tackled more than 20 years ago. 10,000 horses later, we have had some significant successes. And I too, Ali, I am so excited that you're here. And Ryan, thank you very much for suggesting this and introducing us. And I'm going to move along quickly because I want to get to Ali. But um, <laughs> no, but this part, this part is amazing. It's very simply so that we keep that in mind. The horse, as Ryan says, ideally needs to be healthy. That deals with the feet, teeth, body, mind, not sore, in able to travel in balance and emotionally safe and connected with the rider. Mm -hmm. The rider needs to be healthy, enough to ride, comfortable in the seat, balanced with good posture, capable of self-carriage, emotionally secure, and connected with the horse. You'll have a lot more to say about that, Ali, right? Yes, yes. The saddle, and um, we've become quite famous, gratefully, for building equipment that encourages healthy, natural movement. Um, that means we learn that the underside needs to be shaped generously to welcome a horse's uplifted and expanding back, not the standing back, which has been traditional in saddle making history. It should not be shaped to fit the horse's slope of shoulder and shape of back while the horse is standing. It needs to have a strong internal skeleton, a tree. Treeless saddles in our studies um, resulted in focal point pressure that gradually caved in a horse's back and did not make it possible to have healthy biomechanics over time. So we'll stick our necks out there and say that right now. And of course, the saddle needs to balance a rider extremely comfortably so the rider feels safe and in balance. So the interface is the most under 
underappreciated or underinvestigated feature of the four components in our experience. We are referring to the space between the underside of your saddle, whatever saddle, and the body of your horse. It needs to be customizable and uh, to fit your horse for life. It should be customizable all through seasons and stages of training, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And it should have cushioning and conforming um, power that is really significant to deflect pressure and keep auto dynamically adjusting as it as your horse travels. And it, you need shims. Shims are not a bad thing. Shims must be supportive. They need to be the right texture. They need to be the right shape. They need to be tapered. And you need to know where to put them in order to let them be effective. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how can you tell if a horse might be traveling under an ill-fitting saddle? Well, clearly a horse like this is obviously stressed. We, you can just sense that and ache in your heart when you see a horse traveling yeah. like this. Ollie's shaking yeah. her head. Yeah. Um, in varying degrees, you can see um, things quite obviously. Here, obviously, the same horse is more comfortable. What are the features that you could identify and break down uh, so that you might you might notice things when you're out on the trail with your your own horse or have a friend who you might help become more aware because we're trying to raise the level of consciousness worldwide for the sake of these horses. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, here's a, here's the before and after of that horse. And this I took these photographs. They're not great photographs, but it it was such a classic example of how equipment alone can make a tremendous change. I'm no riding instructor, but all we did with that horse on the left who had carried this gal for thousands of miles on endurance races is change equipment. And within one trip around the arena, Allie, that's what it looked like. You can and see the... Was the, it the, no, was it the let saddle? Let me just break it down into five, five simple components on both sides. Five signs of stress that, that uh, we generally look for are things like the head held high, a head nodding up during the walk, even on a loose rein. Transitions or stops are hard with the head shooting up. The head and neck generally look shorter than the length of the body. The strides are short and choppy. The neck is tense and skinny. See, from top to bottom, it looks really skinny. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the horse is just stiff and working hard. The five sides of comfort that we generally notice, the head nods down during the walk, transitions to the top. The top, top line is stretched. Um, generally, the head and neck look more like the same length as the body because he's balancing with that entire bridge structure mm -hmm. um, using his head and neck, which he can't mm -hmm. use if he's pressed and contorting his body to avoid discomfort. Longer mm -hmm. rhythmic strides, softer, mm -hmm. deeper neck, less tense, particularly in the under um, neck muscles. Mm -hmm. Overall, it looks more effortless, yes? Okay, rethink saddle fit. How can <laughs> you have confidence your saddle isn't in the way of your comfort and performance? Well, traditionally shaped trees, we discovered, are still being made with um, foundations that mirror the slope of a horse's standing back. They're mm -hmm. often built to mirror the angle of the shoulder as well. Uh, uh, to be fair, this picture of an English tree that I grabbed is, is too tight and clearly doesn't fit. But even with a saddle that ill-fitting, an interface um, can help you. We just, just to reiterate, we believe a saddle should be a hug and it sure beats a pinch and a pain. And our saddles are the, the one in the center and the one in the top right are our saddles. The one in the bottom looks more like a birdhouse roof, roof on a beach ball, doesn't it? English or Western, it doesn't matter. The concept is the same. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, by the way, just a little sneak peek. We are finally ready to launch our new English saddle line. And we've been able to get the twist for the rider narrower than ever. We are finally um, achieving the praise of pros who are very concerned about their leg drape. And we have not wanted to compromise the underside shape for the sake of the horse because we've been very successful with that for years. But Ali, I can't wait for you to ride it. <laughs> I will try it. I will try it. So super it simple soon. saddle fitting, how to make any saddle feel much better to any horse. You must 
have a saddle pad which offers supreme pressure protection directly under your saddle. You don't need the bulk where your legs are. So you don't need that big, thick overall pad at all. You just need the right consistency underneath the bars of your saddle. Mm -hmm. It needs to auto adjust and conform softly as the horse travels along to customize the fit mm -hmm. during your ride. Mm -hmm. It needs to have pockets that house your tapered foam shims um, in the right position for the most benefit and no vertical seams that force you to put the shims where your horse's body doesn't need them. Yeah. Okay. Tapered foam shims of the right shape and consistency, support and squish we talk about. Um, and we want you to have the confidence. You need to have confidence that you know what to do for your horse. Our mission, now that we have the equipment so effective, is now focused on helping riders to be more confident about how to set up their saddles yes. and interface for successful rides, no matter what discipline or what season. Our comprehensive free saddle fit evaluation system uh, service is unique in the world. And we're really confident we can make sure you've got it right. We want you, no matter how often you have to contact us, we want you to get more and more confidence so that we can Take the training reels, wheels off and you can realize how simple this is when you just understand some principles. Mm -hmm. We can prove it to you virtually with virtual lessons or the freeway. Um, and, and sometimes we're able to do in-person service and we're building a network of ambassadors who will be better and better educated about all this to just help you realize how simple it is. So we're growing. But right now we do have our free um, evaluation service, please take advantage of it. Our team loves to be contacted. No matter how thorny you think your problem is, I bet you we've seen it worse. Okay, super simple. The four Bs, getting back to this geeking out about uh, making sing things simple. Um, we came up with this and hope it's effective for you. You need to remember four Bs. You need to know where is the back edge of your horse's scapula bone. Feel for it with your fingers. If he's got a fleshy shoulder, you can find it. You don't have to hurt him, but be aware of where that scapula is when he's standing, because that tells you how to position your saddle front to back. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to lift the front leg and notice that there's a bulge of muscle that pulls those scapula back and it it should bulge when you do that it may not be bulging when your horse is standing you may even have a, a hollow behind the scapula which is tragic when you realize that that hollow is there because the horse hasn't been able to travel as nature intended mm -hmm. and he's been that muscle's been wasted because the saddle has dug in behind the back edge of the standing scapula anyway mm -hmm. lift the leg feel the bulge that's the second b and then think behind the bulge is where you need to put the lifting power of a shim. And you, we have two thicknesses, thin and thick. We have three different shapes. A couple of them are specifically designed to help with preserving that shoulder range of motion. And um, very basically, once you know where the back of that bulge is and where you need to put the lifting power behind it, you install it in your pad relative to where your horse's body needs it, you might need to put your pad on your horse and just make sure you, you're going to be putting the shim in the pocket in the right place for your horse because your pad may be long or short, your saddle may be long or short. Think your horse's body needs to have the shim where it needs to be. Okay, once you get the shim in for the shoulder range of motion, stand back and take a look at the balance of your saddle if you want to roll something cylindrical. Mm -hmm. Um and where it lands, you want the back edge of your seat bones to be. So particularly English riders generally like to be more toward the center of the seat. Western maybe a little farther back, but you don't want to be all the way back at the candle or too far forward. You need to be just right. And mm -hmm. if that shoulder shim has lifted the saddle and tilted you rearward a little bit too far, just stick a, a rear shim in, which is tapered in the opposite direction, and that'll balance you out. If your horse is downhill, you might have to add a little more lift in the front to get your balance where you need to be, but that's all you need to do. If you have more serious muscle anomalies that you're concerned about, you might think you might need an extra shim, please consult us because we like you to use as little shim as necessary to get the job done. Here's a good example. This is an Andalusian, beautiful Andalusian with a typical low slung back. But he's very powerful 
when his abdominal muscles are engaged and he's pushing up under a rider, he almost becomes flat from croup to wither, right? So you sure don't want to have a saddle that fits that swale and you don't want to add shims to fill it up either. So in this case, this is Courtney Crane and her beautiful horse, Melly. And Courtney is an excellent rider. And you can see how Melly's back is almost flat from croup to wither. It's really powerful as he pushes up under her because her saddle has all that room in it. And in, in this case, we use a shim to preserve the shoulder range of motion. And then we needed to tilt her back up because he becomes so uphill when he engages. Mm -hmm. So it's simple. Just preserve the shoulder, then change the seat balance you're good to go. If you're not confident which shim to choose, and we have two different thicknesses, three different shapes, um, and if, 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 if you're even not confident, where is your horse's scapula? We'll help you find it, but the blue arrow, arrow represents where the scapula is when you're standing. That tells you where to how to position your saddle. This is a little bit different Western from English. We've got all this information on our website. I'm hurrying because I want to get to Allie. Um, and then lift the leg where the scapula swings back, put the shim. Anyway, contact us if you're not confident. What else have I got here that I want to show you? Oh, okay. Now and then it is a good idea to take your saddle and put it on your horse's naked body just to have a look at things. Make sure you've positioned it front to back just right in a Western saddle. The front concho where your fingertips curl over the back edge of your horse's scapula, the front one third of the concho should be right there under your fingertips. Your saddle doesn't be any further farther than that, even if you have a short backed horse. So this has been universal in our discoveries. Mm -hmm. So position your saddle that way, tuck the shim in back underneath where the scapula bulge muscle is, stand back, take a look, feel underneath there, look at um, the seat balance. In this case, this horse is an uphill horse already. So we've tilted the saddle too far. We had a shim in the rear to tilt it back. It's easy. Then you put them in the pad, of course. No matter what saddle you ride, always double check before you put a foot in the stirrup to make sure that you have shoulder clearance. Reach up high along the saddle tree bars underneath the pad and the saddle. And um, and just make sure if it feels a little bit tight while you're standing, while the horse is standing there, it's worth going through the exercise of having the horse walk forward and you walk back. You might need a friend to lead your horse, but if you can do it by yourself, it's worth the exercise to reach in under there to make sure that the shoulder muscles actually do have room to bulge and, are, and your, your hand isn't crushed. Because if they have room, it's okay if it's a little bit snug. Um, it's not worth adding an extra shim if you don't have to. Okay, what else do I have? Oh, here's one more thing I tucked in because I think it was such an incredible discovery when I realized it myself years ago that a horse's posture this horse on the left standing there, you can actually tell what he can and cannot use in his body when ridden, likely. The saddle is likely squashing him there up along the withers. His his hip is quite angled. His muscles don't look plump at all. And he looks as if he's got some wasted muscle. Mm -hmm. I was feeling kind of sorry for him. Mm -hmm. And his owner happened to spot me and say, um, may I try one of your saddles? And I said, well, all I have is one of our super wide English saddles with me at the moment. But we, she was really eager. So we put it on with the pad and shims and she swung up into that saddle and I turned around and I, I, you're maybe not going to believe this, but I took that picture minutes after taking the first picture on the left. And mm -hmm. you can see how the horse, when he has room to expand and lift, he powers up underneath her and he looks like a totally different blow up doll horse. Mm -hmm. um, that was a phenomenon that really stuck with me. And I've noticed it ever since being so that a horse becomes taller and wider immediately, just bearing the load as long as there's room in the saddle and shims can help create the room. Okay. 
this this is another example I, I love. I'm going to be quick and not go through lots of before and afters, though they <laughs> they often make all of us um, quite emotional because it's the change can be so stark, just changing the equipment. And wait till Allie finishes with you and we change the rider. But this horse on the left, off the track thoroughbred, um, Aaliyah Matke is her name. Bentley is his name. She loved this horse. Clearly, he was struggling under the saddle. We changed equipment, and that was an immediate reaction at the walk. And then uh, sometime later, I, I think this is not a terribly clear picture, unfortunately, but when she sent this picture, I thought, you are now a poster child for us. Look yeah. at that horse. It doesn't even look like the same animal. Clearly, yeah. her ridermanship improved considerably, huh, Allie? Yes, totally. Okay, more, back, um, more before and afters. I'll click through them. Make sure your saddle doesn't restrict your shoulders, no matter what saddle you ride or how well constructed your saddle is, whether it's ours or anyone else's, you must contour the space between your horse's body and the saddle, or it won't feel as good to him as you want it to feel, and your ride won't be your dream ride. Your interface is key. Okay. Hello at ContourSaddlery.com. We're eager to serve you. We want to change the world for ridden horses. Ali Gonzalez. Oh, thank help you. Us. I, I will also add that the le, I've had the chance to take two lessons with Ali Gonzalez, and on both of them, the exponential uh, connection with my horse that I felt was astounding to me. Ali, you made me aware. Oh, you're going to have me. Ryan is telling me to stop. I can't find my thing. Stop the share. share. Yeah. Oh, resume this. Stop the share. Okay. Is it working? Yes. <laughs> Am I still on camera? You are. All right. Um, let me get back to y'all. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, I felt connected to my seat bones, which were connected my, to my horse, and my horse's response was so immediate, I was astounded. Ali, yeah, I thank you. Know, I want you was... to share this with everybody. I want yes, everyone to feel what I felt. Going to, we're thank going Thank you. To... <laughs> thank you, Leticia. But I also want to... Um just tell my story with my young mare with your help and the shims with this young mare normally mm -hmm. i don't have a lot of problems with my saddles or with my horses because i put muscles on them before i start them so they have a very nice back this young four year old mare uh, just started and it was so difficult because she's very tall. Remember that one, Natisha? You had me. I do remember. She's doing amazing because now she feels more comfortable with the shimming and the system, the pad system, and she's doing fantastic. I will find also a video and I'll send it to you because she looks like a 10 now. Well, that is really exciting. And we did it virtually. That's another yes. thing. I live in Costa Rica for the, if you don't know me, I'm in Costa Rica. And Leticia helped me just with a face. Uh, it was it FaceTime. FaceTime or WhatsApp. I can see yeah. everything. And I'm sure you can when you're coaching riders virtually. Yes. Isn't it amazing? It, no one it, can it, believe it until they've tried a virtual coaching experience. But you can see across the entire arena. You can see everything. Everything. And, um, Yes, as Brian and you were telling everybody, like we can be super riders and we can have the best horse with the best training. But if the saddle is not comfortable for the horse, it's not going to help our riding, it's not going to help our progress in our training because the horse is not able to move naturally. Horses are amazing. And they will do everything for you, but they have to be comfortable. Imagine that we we go you we we go dancing, but the only shoes I have they're three sizes less. That will be not so much fun to go dancing, right? We can put you know the, the, the shoes and walk ten minutes, but not the whole night dancing. So right. that's why it's so important this interface between um the awareness and that's what i'm going to talk now i'm going to talk about uh, as a riders we have to be aware of our body aware of the horse's body too and the horse's movement so i'm going to start sharing my presentation okay okay perfect 
let me find it. You made me aware of my body parts. I always thought I had the sensitivity of a tree. I was frustrated <laughs> that I couldn't feel it, but you found the way to help me feel it. No, you are fantastic, my dear. No, I didn't feel it. <laughs> well, sometimes we have, uh, we have, we have uh, our brain, and I uh, just want to like explain what is biomechanics. Biomechanics. When we talk about biomechanics, we talk about our nervous system. It's how we react with or we perceive first our environment and ourselves. And sometimes our brain is not that aware of our body. So I really like to start with the pelvis. And uh, that's why I put it like exploring the biomechanics of the pelvis when right while writing. Um, I, I thought that was uh, specific. Um, just like us, humans and every living creature is dealing with gravity. That's our kind of, we are always having to be under gravity and we have, gravity has an effect on us. As a human, we because we're standing up our right, up our right is different how we deal with gravity compared um, how horses deal with gravity. So this is a little video of um, how if we, let me see if I can stop it here. If we see this uh, two centers, you see how this, um, wheel and this wheel they kind of get together right they go they go uh to the middle of the horse and that's why we have um you know like uh this area of the horse when they get older is because they were under you know gravity they can be in pastures and they they just have this um position because the organs and everything that is under the spine the spine is designed to carry weight under it's like 240 pounds in a normal horse so there is weight here in the middle and that's why the center is like the the uh kind of the um, uh, shoulder girdle comes down and this arrow and this arrow so this is how horses deal with gravity we have to understand this because we don't have that we are we have um vertical position and our spine we're dealing with gravity in different ways than the horses does so for example some people ask me but i did everything i didn't ride my horse hard i didn't um uh, you know, like I started very slow, but I didn't work my horse a lot. And he has an injury. He, he injured himself. He has an injury. He has uh, something that is hurting. And it's because of the position of the horse, right? Muscles and everything is going to affect um, the horse's body. And gravity is a big, big force that horses have to deal with. So uh, let me show you when we have our our horses, like you said it in the um, in the picture, how when they work and they start building muscles and when they move under a good saddle, we can have the opposite, the, the opposite direction. So this wheel that is going to move the hind quarters are going to come under the horse and the short shoulder girl and the top light line opens and the horse is very light and easy. That's kind of uh, the same that you were showing with the uh, before and after uh, pictures. And this tension is the positive tension. It's a positive tension when we train and move um, correctly. Okay, so. I love those little wheels moving. I love it. <laughs> okay, so that is 
how it feels like that's that's one of my my horses i really like him he's very light and he's actually can you see how this part of the horse the front part of the horse the shoulder girdle and um the um, that will be the front center of power trans transmission that's called in biomechanics okay and this is the hind center of power development we can imagine here so when they work together and they when when the horse is comfortable the, he can move in a very nice way and we can sit in a very nice way also because that's the deal if the horse is not comfortable we cannot also be 100 percent balanced because the horse is going to be dealing with pain pinching etc and his balance is going to be affected too okay so it's important to recognize that gravity pulls everything down towards the center of the earth including the human body these forces move through the center of gravity which is crucial to consider when assessing someone's ability to maintain balance so in order to understand balance we need to take care of that but if the saddle is not fitting correctly it's impossible right so we want to improve our writing if we want to improve our writing skills it's important to have a, a good grasp, grasp of how horses move and you already show a video of a horse's back moving i have the the other view from the from the top and you see we can see the there is nothing still when a horse is walking or trotting everything is moving we have to understand that uh when we sit on a horse we're sitting in a um moving base to say it some somehow it's everything is moving a moving platform right so you see how they the the back moves up down side to side and also rotates here it's another Ollie, yes could i say something yes, because it's please. something i've played with too is views from above and the one thing this is a magnificent video the one thing it does not show though is if the horse powered up under a load if it were carrying weight it would become much wider so yes got shoulders bulging here wider yes. but the back becomes much wider exactly and they can't exactly. show that there yeah what we wanted to 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 show is that the horse is not walking only like this it's walking for it's moving right under like that moving right. moving moving so we have to understand that before we sit on a, on a saddle because on a horse because sometimes we have this fixed position or you don't move in your when when you're sitting in a saddle how many things we hear about sitting on a horse right straight your back don't move try to be still how am i going to be still under that movement so we have to be very aware of that we need to understand that the horse's back is always moving in different ways in a three-dimensional way is forward backwards right left and with rotation but also and probably you're going to notice something here they also have braces and a difficult side and sometimes for example the barrel can move very well to one side and not so well to the other side and they have asymmetries and they have many things many things just like us there is nothing symmetrical in our body and of course they can be also degrees of asymmetry right so that's also important to understand when we're feeding a saddle when we are riding we need to understand that they are not perfect right left no they balance they they compensate as we compensate also as a riders and um 
sometimes it's very interesting to understand that the human being is not symmetrical because we have more organs on the right side. Mm -hmm. So our right side actually is heavier than the left and there is rotations also in our body and asymmetries in our body. So um, also I have a little, a little video of how the walk uh, works related to beats. So is uh, hind front and then hind front. And um, understanding this part is very important. Understanding the horse's movement. But again, if the equipment is not comfortable, he's not going to be able to move correctly. Correct? So, and the trot, as you can see, it's a little bit different. It's diag a diagonal movement. You see how the left, uh, the hind, um, the inside hind and the outside front are moving at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we, we can talk about gates, but the most important thing is how the horses feel under saddle and with our weight to be able to understand also what do we need to, to do, okay? So to ride well, we need good signals from our proprioceptive, proprioceptive system, visual system, vestibular system, and respiratory system. This is how we achieve balance in the saddle as a rider. It's not just a technique. No, it's very big. It's very uh, interesting to understand what happens when uh, we want to be balanced. Our proprioceptive uh, system is um, our skin, our fascia, our muscles. The fascia is um, is like um, <laughs> it's like a little bag that it comes and um, wraps our muscles and our fibers. And there is a lot of information in our proprioceptive, like receptors. And we're going to experiment with that. Also, our our visual system has a very important part in our balance, especially as a riders. Um, some riders have a very nice open posture and they're just looking in front and they, they're quite balanced. But some of them or some of us, they like to, for example, look at the horse's mane all the time look down and look at the horse's mane and what is happening we lose balance when we use um, our focus uh, visual system and compared to the big one to the um it's a uh, peripheral uh, visual system there are two systems the vestibular system is also very important in balance it's our inner ear our inner ear is crucial for balance so if you start to feel a little bit um, not so balanced and have problems with your ears, just check it out. Be sure that you have a good, good health in your inner ear. And the respiratory system is very important also for balance because that's what um, actually is going to affect in many ways the way we ride is going to affect our nervous system because breathing is related to our state of mind and also to our balance. So what is proprioception? It's the body's ability to sense its location, movements, and actions. We're going to experiment with this in two seconds. Proprioception is a continuous feedback loop between sensory receptors through your body and your nervous system. Sensory receptors are located on your skin, joints, and muscles. When we move, our brain senses the effort, force, and heaviness of our actions and positions and responds accordingly. 
So I'm going to stop sharing for a second and we're going to understand what is proprioception because that was very, very scientific. Now we have to feel it. All right, so everybody, just put your arms, your hands over your head and feel how this feels, all right? Just feel if there is one arm longer than the other or not. Lower down and stand and do it again and just remember how this feels. Okay. Think about your shoulders. Good. All right. Now we're going to tap our right arm and shoulder and neck and just tap it, tap it, tap it. We're we're getting those receptors awake. And this is a very nice way to understand what is proprioception. So we're giving our brain information about our arm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to grab our muscle, our tricep, and kind of rotate to the other side. So you're kind of grabbing with the hand and rotating to the opposite position. So you can go to the hand. So you're kind of massaging, squeeze, squeeze and rotate, squeeze and rotate, squeeze and rotate. Ah, that feels good, huh? Yes. Okay. Okay, now we're going to shake, shake it all over. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, now just feel how do you feel on your right arm and your left compare both nice how was that leticia one is alive one is dead exactly one is alive because our brain knows yeah. because we gave we gave our brain information about that, that arm now lift the arm that you just um tap and lift the other one feel compared to the other arm difference huh this one's lighter this one is lighter exactly okay now compare again if there is one hand or one arm longer than the other yeah the one i exercised I'm not cheating, you guys. I, mean, I, I know. Before. I know. Look at mine. Look at mine. Yeah. You see how flexibility improve. You you located that uh, arm more. Do you feel like this shoulder is lower than the other one? Yes. Yes. It kind of belongs to my body now. Yeah. Correct. So mm -hmm. there is a lot of benefits when we give our brain information and that's what we want to do when we ride, correct? So, but let's tap the other arm because I don't want you to be crooked. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So tap first, all over. Mm -hmm. There you go. So here we're gonna um activating our fascia there is also more uh blood flow so it's a lot of benefits we should tap ourselves every morning like all over just to be awake to be truly awake we have to do it ourselves and not be flogged by someone else yeah well it depends. <laughs> Now let's grab and rotate, grab and rotate. Yeah, that's another way because receptors in our skin and our muscles and our fascia react to different things. Sometimes it's temperature, sometimes it's tapping, different input. Uh -huh. So it's very nice to give them different information. So I just kind of chose these three, shake them 
Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Nobody's watching. There you go. <laughs> I always like to dance with your Latin girls. Yes, I know. Yeah. Okay, so now feel. And it, you immediately feel different. You feel better. Mm -hmm. There you go. Check, check, check. Just check. Now it feels light again compared to the other one. And compare both sides. Let me show you. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Both. Mm -hmm. So that's what we mean with proprioception. And when we write and we start giving our brain the position and information about our pelvis is fantastic as you tried it already okay Wonderful. so let me let me go back to the presentation and we will see first the parts of the pelvis and then we will make a little exercise to feel our pelvis okay all right so okay and the human pelvis is amazing. Can you see the design? It's just fantastic. Is I, <laughs> I, I just cannot stop talking about it. It's just fantastic. <laughs> it's a fantastic design. You see, it's beautiful and very, very um, evolved. Um, you know that our pelvis is very similar, for example, to the monkeys, chimpanzee, gorilla, but they moved completely different because they didn't evolve like we did. You are going to see that our pelvis is able to move like this. Mm -hmm. But the chimpanzees and the monkeys, they are going to walk different than us because their pelvis cannot be but they, can, they don't have the flexibility and the joints that we use. So let's talk about that. All right. Mm. Here you go. So in the presentation, you will see that uh, the ilium is this part of our pelvis. And a very interesting um, thing about our pelvis everybody talks about the hip joint right and some people will think will say where is your hip joint and they will touch this part and it's not that is not where your hip joint is your hip joint is in front you're going to see it clearly here mm -hmm. so you see where the femur head attaches to the pelvis is here and that's where your femur, where your um, hip joint is, is not on top here, is here. And the seat bones are on the bottom. And this is the sacrum and the coccyx. And this is the pubic bone. Okay, so I'm going to start sharing this because I really like this model here. I love this model because it moves. So this is our pubic bone and the seed bones are right, in, right here. Um, before I started to really go deep in the biomechanics, I imagined that my seed bones were on the back. Mm -hmm. You see, there is nothing on the back. This is our sacrum and the tailbone and this is the ilium here right and you see where the seed bones are the seed bones are pretty much in front yeah and they have angles they are not like two straight things Leticia what do you think about your your seed bones before we we I knew? didn't think about them except when people would say access drop your hip and your seat bone I was aware that I was really dull about it I wasn't sure I was 
Mm-hmm. Doing what was asked. Yeah, where where they were or how what you. you know, like no idea. I was just sitting there also, right? And I thought there were two straight things. I never um just realized that they are in an angle. Mm-hmm. And a very interesting thing is can you see the angle of my jaw? Mm-hmm. Do you see the angle of the seat bones? Turn turn it sideways so we can see the angle a little better there like yeah. That? yeah 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 you see the angle mm-hmm. yeah okay. and, and every hold hold it so that the spine is straight the, the spinal yeah. column is straight yeah. so so see look at that look at that yeah and these are the seat bones right these two are the seat bones and they have parts they're not just one thing Okay, so this is the the um, back part of the seat bone, the middle and the front part, very close to the to the um, pubic bone. Okay, just just a second, just a second, two seconds. Get them to quiet down. It was so amazing to be able to feel my seat bones. Right? I'm sorry. <laughs> they were having a party. It was so amazing to be able to feel my seat bones and realize how deep they felt in the saddle. Exactly. Exactly. And now, after realizing that the seat bones, actually, they, they walk, right? Sometimes when we sit on a horse, we just move our pelvis like this, right? And actually, our pelvis is able to move like this. So the seat is walk. That right? is so helpful. It is so amazing to understand that because the horse is not hoping. It's not. It's not a bunny, right? It's not a whale. <laughs> yeah. No, we we saw how the horses move, and our pelvis. That's why God really intended for us to ride horses. Because we have, I have the proof. We have this pelvis. If not, it was going to be more, more. You know, it would be uncomfortable. But the fact that we are able to move like this because we have a joint here, a joint here. This is the pubic symphysis, and we have a joint here, the sacroiliac, and a joint here also we're able to move and to sync with the horse's movement because if you if you remember the pelvis of the horse it's located like this correct Mm -hmm. and ours is here and his movement is really similar to our movement that's why we use horses for um therapy right because our muscles are going to be activated like if we were walking when he's walking right but we need to be able to understand the pelvis movement amazing it's fantastic Mm -hmm. okay so um another part is that when we're sitting on a horse and he's walking probably this it's a little bit exaggerated because the movement is not as big, but I just want you to understand that our movement can sync with his movement because of the design of the pelvis. Okay, so uh, let's get up and touch a little bit the parts. Just stand up and let's locate and I'm going, I'm not going to go very into the names and anything. I just want you to understand the shape of your pelvis. So if I put this model here, I'm going to touch the front part of the ilium. So just locate your part here. Uh-huh. There you go. Mm-hmm. And on the other side, just massage it a little bit. Mm-hmm. There you go. Now, let's touch the back part of the ilium. And I'm going to turn and look for 
the back. There you go. <laughs> now it comes the fun part. Let's touch the seed bone. And you're going to lean a little bit and touch the seed bone. Don't be shy. If the neighbor is looking, it's okay. <laughs> Got him. You explain, you explain late, later that you were looking for your seed bones, right? Yeah? Did you find it? I did. Good. And just to finish, the front, I want you to locate where is your hip joint. So this is the hip joint. There you go. And you see the hip joint is pretty close to my pubic bone is here here's where my actually where my leg begins so this is a lot of information that is going to help when we're sitting on the horse if everything moves correctly now we understand the body map right did i don't know if you saw the um announcement that we were going to use a little towel so we're going to roll the towel. Like this. And what we did, we're going to do what we did uh, in our arms and shoulders to our pelvis. Okay. So Take a second and find a roll towel. And the first movement that we're going to do, we're going to try to sit on the seat bones like this. Okay, there you go. Sit and feel the seat bones in the towel. And we're going to, there you go, actually roll forward and backwards. Go forward and backwards, forward and backwards. There you go. I'm going to do it too. So we're, need... we're arching our back. And exactly. Then... Mm -hmm. We're going to uh, flex and extend our back and feel the seat bones under you, massaging the borders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're doing this because we're moving our pelvis just like this so um our pubic bone comes up and then comes back there you go so roll for a few minutes there and this is going to help in general uh, our posture actually after working a lot in the computer i'm always trying to do that when i go um in a trip and um i'm seated um, for a long time in a plane or something, I take a little towel and I just kind of put it here. And that way, this hip joint is actually, the angle is more open and it kind of relaxes me. And I play with the pelvis, flexion and extension, flexion and extension. The, yeah, what the about chair? the hollowing? Hollowing uh, of the back. Are, yes. you, are you wanting us yes. to hollow our back yes. in this yes. situation? Yes. Go all the way forward and backwards and feel the seed bone. We're giving our brain, again, information about where the seed bones are. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Now, let's take the towel and feel the difference. Deep in the saddle. <laughs> yes. I should be sitting on a saddle. I should be yeah, you could be sitting on a saddle, but even in the chair, we can practice and we can connect our seat bones to our brain. And that is awareness. We need to know if one seat bone is a little bit forward because our pelvis is very normal that our pelvis will be tilt this way and rotated this way. And imagine. We want to ride perfect, but our pelvis is a little bit like this. And with this type of exercises, we can balance the, the seat bones. We can balance the pelvis and our brain is going to start locating the seat bones better. 
How's that? Do you feel it? Yeah, I do. Perfect. Is there any questions, Ryan? I'm sorry, I have just forget and I don't stop talking. <laughs> Yep, there aren't any questions yet, but if anybody has any questions, mm -hmm. they can just type them in the chat and I'll bring them to your attention. But for yeah. right now, I think we're we're all good. Perfect. Perfect. So how's that? How are we doing with time? Because I, I forget. Yeah, take as much time as you need. Perfect. All right. <laughs> good. So that exercise will help also our posture uh, and you can try it, you can walk a little bit and feel how your your brain is locating your pelvis different. Okay, so just walk for a few mm -hmm. and feel and feel how your brain is huh, understanding your movement better. Mm -hmm. How was that? That was it was good. I I again being aware and thinking mm -hmm. of those plates of mm -hmm. the pelvis is so interesting. You're going to talk yes. about the posting yeah. prop, right? Yeah. yeah, we're going to, we're going to. <laughs> the halves, the half, the pelvic half, the pelvic half. Okay. Yeah. Another fun exercise to start giving our our brain information actually is to place the roll like this and to move side to side. Okay, so the, the, the other direction from pubic bone to tailbone and just rock side to side. And you will see, you will see how you're going to feel the inner part of the seat bones mm -hmm. for a while. There you go. This so, is fabulous. It is. It is. I told you. That was, is, this is going to give you a lot of proprioception there, a lot of information for your brain. So keep massaging that part side to side. And also, this is um, touching our pelvic floor. That is a big, big proprioceptive area. We're activating our pelvic floor and um you have experienced it when you're in the saddle you're going to feel the base wider and mm, easier more more room in your base so side to side let's give it a minute we need to spend a little time between three four minutes doing something so the receptors are really clear in our brain. Remember that this is information for our brain. All this so at is least three minutes. You would at recommend least it three easy. minutes. Yeah, at least three minutes. Um, if there is something that we do, just try a little bit longer and you don't feel it well, just try it a little bit longer. So we're kind of rocking our pelvis side to side. Mm -hmm. There you go. and take it out and feel the difference oh i'm so happy already <laughs> <laughs> i get happy when i when i feel my seed bones and my base how's that oh it's great it is good actually it right? is great. yeah i just have that image of the different plates and it helps mm -hmm. me be conscious mm -hmm. of opening widening them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. angling them and how's the sensation do you feel that it it feels completely different from the beginning right it is oh yes it, it is, does it's wider wider mm -hmm. more more loose more not uh, not tight so tight and, not braced yes how's your how's your uh seat bones how are your seat bones ryan yeah they're very good but i have two questions for yeah. you mm -hmm. um the one is from Janice, and she's going, because of the radiation that I had for cancer, I can't feel my seat bones. So is there 
to be able to feel that. This is very uh, gentle. And also we can use sponges. Mm -hmm. Also to sit. And you can also massage a little bit your seat bones to start getting more proprioception and i will recommend a lot to um, for example this probably will help you a lot this soft towel a roll like this is very gentle to start that's why we do it first like this and um later on you can do it in the on the saddle but um like in a chair it's going to is probably going to help. I hope if not, uh, we can help you in another way, maybe in a call or something uh, to see what we have available to, to help her. I would love to help her. Cool, great. And then Renee is asking, since the seat bones are more in the front than sitting in our saddle and visualizing that we are, are back on our pockets, is that the correct visual for Western riders? Wow, that's very important. That's very important because if we sit in our pockets, look where we are sitting. We're sitting here in our sacrum and coccyx, and these are not designed to be sitting on. We are we can sit in the border, in the uh, on the um, back border of the seat bones. But when we think and we take it literally, we uh, we we instructors are so cute, right? We. <laughs> We, in writers, we're very, we take everything literally. We think, sit in the pockets. And so that will be sitting on the pockets. That will be sitting on your, on your sacrum. So probably what we or the instructor wanted to tell you was, okay, maybe you were seated too much on your pubic bone and you were arched, like, let me show you, like this. And he wanted you to understand that you could sit a little bit back, but not in your pockets. Um, um, we need to understand that it's about the seating board bones are designed to be seated on. And we can, we can play in all the angles of the seating bone, and that is going to be good. It's not just one part of the seat bone that we have to be fixed that's kind of the idea of understanding uh, that movement in the pelvis is important um, and there is not a fixed position because the horse is not just a statue but, exactly it's not it's not a statue it's not a it's not a it's not steady everything is moving so we need to understand that we're going to be in different parts of the seat bones at different moments on the horse's back. Was that uh, clear enough, Leticia? Maybe you can help me. I don't no, know if I, I think that's the, words, the, initial, the, the sufficient words to explain. Yeah. And you don't have to rotate so far as to arch your back. You're not saying that. Maybe no. in the exercise with the towel, yes, oh, yeah. on the because horse's back, you don't no. want to be arching. Exactly. We will be rotating here. We will be moving from here to the next and the next and the next position, but it's not fixed on the back or on the middle or in the front. Actually, we are moving all around the seat bone. It's and nothing so fluid fixed. About it. It's yeah. a fluid movement yeah. instead of a fixed position. We have to stop thinking about position we need to be able to move the better we move the better riders we are the better because your horse can move exactly because we're not in the way of the horse anymore mm -hmm. okay so um another interesting thing and that's i know leticia is waiting for this one so bad she's Lovely. actually she just wanted me to talk about this one <laughs> no 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 <laughs> Another inter interesting thing is that when we bend our legs, the seat bones get wider. So our base gets wider and we can feel it. We can also feel it. Stand up and place your, your hands on the seat bones 
and bend your legs. You will feel how your seat bones are going to get wider. And when you stand up, the seat bones are going to get close together again. So do, do it a couple of times. Feel the seat bones getting wider when you, when you bend your legs. And when you stand up again, feel the seat bones again together. This is very important. It's a very easy um, exercise. It's a, a movement that we do a lot, but we don't, we don't understand that we're doing it. We, we sometimes, don't think about it. When you yeah, told me about, about it, it, the concept of when you are bending, coming down in the sitting trot, for instance, mm -hmm. your horse is coming up under you. So all the work we've done to build these wonderful saddles, exactly. being aware that the horse has more room and, and that I can be aware of opening the plates of my pelvis. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful feeling. I felt much more connected mm -hmm. to my horse in the trot so doing that. The rising trot is not about the rising. It's about coming back to the saddle, yeah. right? If I think about, okay, I'm standing and then I coming back and getting wider and standing and coming back to the saddle and getting wider is about getting wider so my horse's back can come up and i am open to receive it yes so the, our brain changes in the moment we understand that the seat bones can get wider or are getting wider every time that we're coming back to the saddle and standing up and coming back to the saddle and standing up. So Isn't that the coolest, that is <laughs> just the most wonderful awareness. It is, but we need feel, we need to feel them first, locate them first and understand that this is happening. We don't think about it, but this is happening. And our job is to absorb the horse's movement. This is our job as a riders. And a braced pelvis cannot absorb anything. And sometimes we post or we do the rising trot like this, boom, down, up, down, up. And we're not even being conscious of oh i'm getting softer wider my base is wider my base is wider and then close wider and close and everything changes when we understand that this part of my base is soft and mobile sometimes it's, it's very difficult <laughs> now she's happy because i talked about this one <laughs> Because it was a great experience for you. Can you tell oh, us about it, Oh, that? it was. Well, all, all of it. The towel, and in your case, the um, gelatinous balls. Mm -hmm. the, the awareness of my body parts was a lovely discovery yes. for a 79-year-old yes. woman. It was, <laughs> <laughs> where have I been? Yeah, and I was on the floor and to feel our place <laughs> and everything is just fantastic. So understanding that at the walk, my pelvis is able to move like this in synchrony with the horse's back. In the posting trot, my pelvis is able to get wider and closer, wider and closer when I'm posting, changes and help us our balance as a rider because our body parts are more coordinated. You know, like that's, I think riding is, a lot of coordination and we don't give that little piece of uh you know we think about the techniques and we think about but coordination it's about coordinating our movement more than anything else and you add to that coordinating with the horse it it exactly. helped me be more aware of where my horse's hips and legs were in stride it's, it's like it's dancing it's, it's like dancing yeah. If you dance with a good dancer, oh my God, you can do magic. Yeah. If your partner is not such a good dancer and he's <laughs> out of yeah. rhythm and it's like, okay, you know, like it's difficult, it's difficult. And if we're out of sync, the balance is going to be off all the time. That's the thing. That's the tricky part about it. So 
it's a lot of coordination it's a lot of understanding how our body um works it's it's just uh, fantastic to understand that this is our body and we are able to get better at it remember the first class the feeling when you sat down the second time after you understood this your yes. brain was like yes no problem right and my horse went oh, oh yeah, thank you it. lady <laughs> Thank you, lady. So I'm not carrying a tree up there anymore. Yes, yeah. we need to understand that movement is our best ally. It's not, it's not a position, it's movement because it's a dynamic alignment, because it's a dynamic base. Our horse is moving, trotting, cantering. In the canter, the movement is going to be different, right? because it's a different type of movement, but our pelvis is designed to be moved like that too. It's not a problem and there is nothing that is bracing. It's just our conscious to be aware of that we're able to move. Ryan. Probably. No, I think that sounds fantastic. Uh, do you have any comments uh, to, uh, to start to wrap this up, Leticia? Uh, no, I just love this. I love this stuff. Being mm -hmm. aware that one can can actually control the 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 plates of the pelvis. When I think mm -hmm. of the canter, I always used to think of. And this is naive. I'm not a, a I'm not a schooled rider. But I thought of the canter as a series of little leaps, and I thought more about my sternum and withers in the process. Mm -hmm. And the bottom part of me, which is the most connected part. Yes, because my horse. the pelvis is the most important. It is the connection yeah. between our legs and our upper body. Mm -hmm. and the connection, we ha we can ride. And the old masters, they really meant it. You have to ride from your seat, from your pelvis. I you heard that. Oh, I've heard we, that said, heard but I it. never identified we, we, with it. We heard it. We, we like yeah. how, how if I don't yeah. even recognize how my pelvis works, <laughs> right? So there is um, a lot to learn about how to move in the saddle to be comfortable and to make our horses move better too, right? So make sure there's room under their saddles, no matter what saddle you ride, so they can move better. Exactly. Don't track them. Yes, because we, the same thing happens. I can have all this knowledge, but if my horse is not feeling good under saddle, if the saddle is pinching, if the saddle is bracing his ribs, if he was not, go, he's not going to move well. So I, you know, come, I'm so excited about this four components because it's amazing we need the healthy physically and mentally and energetic horse we need good equipment we need awareness of our body and the connection of all, all of them so i really thank you for doing this it's, it's really really good Thank you for joining us, <laughs> Alejandra Gonzalez. So Alejandra, how could people follow up with you and to learn more about you and what you do? Well, they can contact me in Facebook. I have two um, pages. One is Alejandra Gonzalez Parelli Professional, and the other one is Alejandra Gonzalez. If you put Costa Rica, also probably we'll find it. Instagram <laughs> is Ale Parelli Pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, my email is www. No, that's the webpage. Uh, the email is ale at aleparellipro.com. A L E. Mm -hmm. A L E. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A -L -E. And then also on the, on the contour side, uh, if you're interested in a free saddle fit evaluation or learning more, there's a ton of articles and videos that uh, dive a bit deeper into the four components. Um, and there's just so much more. But visit contoursaddlery.com. At the right-hand side at the top, you'll see the free saddle fit evaluation button. 
And we'd and love please, to do that for you. Please take advantage of that. Let's take advantage. It's amazing. It's amazing. I have done it and I just cannot be more happy with, with this young mare that is growing. And we need to understand this. Horses have lots of stages. This is a young, in my case, it's a young horse. And uh, she was just starting on their saddle. Her, she didn't have a lot of muscles because she's too tall. Right now, I think I'm very close to ask Leticia to do another one because now she has muscles and we have to change the probably the, the shims. We have to adjust the shims because this has been uh, two months now and yeah. now she looks full and she moves beautiful. And I think I'm, almost ready to change the combination of the shims. That's wonderful. You want to use as few as you need, but you yes. always need one to preserve the shoulder. And mm -hmm. um, with those different shapes, you can micro tune the fit of every horse in your barn <laughs> yes. for the rest of their lives. It's a, it's a wonderful a wonderful feeling you can have. I was I was very worried about her. It's like, what is wrong with her? Why can I not really um, I was I was feeling a little bit stuck with her, her progress, mm -hmm. and the shims made a big difference. Yeah, she couldn't move before. That's all. Mm -hmm. She was not comfortable. It can help a saddle fit more horses. You don't need a different saddle for every horse. You really you just microtune the interface. Mm -hmm. Yes, save you a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Is there any other questions, uh, Ryan? Or are we are we no, How I think that was doing? pretty much it. But if there was anything that I see afterwards, I'll make sure that um, mm -hmm. that we get an answer. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, the, uh, someone's asking if this will be available for a replay. And yes, it will. We'll uh, send it out afterwards and it'll be on our website as well. Perfect. Um, but fantastic. So we hope to well, see you on contourstottery.com. We'd love to see your free saddle foot evaluation. We'd love for you to talk to... Alejandra on her Facebook page or her Instagram page. And until then, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank, thank you, you so for joining us. And you, hugs and kisses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah.